ladies and gentlemen, and as always, thank you for watching. Uh, today, I have the rare and distinct pleasure of having my wife, Mom Pratt, on, <laughs> known on YouTube as Mom Pratt. Uh, we have just a simple tractor tow, uh, one-way tow from Cape down to Sykeston. Simple, easy job. Uh, normally, we would handle this with uh, number 10, our 20-ton single-axle unit. Uh, but a lot of the parking lots are still snow and ice covered, and uh, I like having eight-wheel drive in the back. So, anyway, here we go. Okay. We are at the... Pickup location. I just got this one ready. I'm going to turn it around and grab it from the back. Do a rear tow. They had it pulled out, set up, and ready for a front tow, but I'd rather grab it from the back. Not have to remove the drive shaft and reinstall the drive shaft. All that good happy business. There's Mama Pratt. And the rotator. Yeah, I know it seems like overkill towing with the rotator, but Oh, uh, I know some people will ask, it will not cost the customer any more for the tow, whether we use the rotator or with, we would have used our 20 ton. Does not cost the customer any more. Now, if it was a recovery or something, that's different, but tow, the standard rate depending on what we are towing, not the vehicle that we are used using to tow it with, if that makes sense. We have a rate, a standard rate for towing a bobtail truck, which is what this is. We have standard rate for box truck and truck and trailer, truck and loaded trailer. I picked a bad spot to do that, right in that water. Pull up and get out of the water. Pull up and get out of the water. better but oh well Adjusted, I can't hardly see. Must have been a tall driver. <laughs> All right. 
feel better. Uh, yes, sir, please. chains perfect for situations like this so you don't have to get down in the water snow ice etc Tightens the chains and keeps the airbags from overextending. there, babe.
Tie down chains, some people use straps. Biggest thing is to not get the chain or strap, whatever, over the S cams and interfere with the brakes, causing damage. And again, I'm not supporting this with extra blocks under the tires because I'm not actually getting under the truck. Couple of things left here. Breakaway chains. Breakaway chains being one of the things. And as usual, we put it so that in the event it should break away, the chain is pulling into the throat of the hook, not against the flimsy little safety clasp. We hope nothing like that ever happens, but you do your best to prepare in case it does. On the other side. Steering wheel strap, and as always, go to the secure, non moving base of the seat. Otherwise, the seat could fluctuate up and down and cause the steering wheel to move. had people ask you know can you use the uh, seat belt on a front toe you can use the seat belt to keep the wheels from turning out on you but I would not trust the seat belt for a rear toe to keep the steering wheel straight like we're doing here I much prefer the straps that I'm using also a lot of people ask why do we not re, uh, release the parking brakes whenever we're doing a rear tow? Several reasons. First of all, at least in the US, most steer axles, front axles, which is what is on the ground currently, do not have parking brakes. They roll freely, even when the parking brake is set. Number two, if you leave the parking brake set, and you should, heaven forbid, have a breakaway situation, 
the parking brakes are applied on this truck and it's going to come to a much quicker stop should it break away hope and pray that nothing like that ever happens but that is the reasoning my reasoning anyway all right steering wheel strapped and i'll show you here in a second like these wheels cannot move them the parking brake is set Again, the parking brakes are set, so the rear tires are locked and will not move. However, the front tires roll freely. That's also to allow the driver in the event of a loss of brake air pressure to still have some steering rather than having the brakes locked up the parking brakes locked up if the driver should be driving along normally and the brakes lock up he still has steering that's not being counteracted by parking brake almost ready bud two more things breakaway chain and what might the other be breakaway chain oh come on Chain links get caught down in the grab hook and make it difficult to get out of there sometimes. Okay. Check the lights on the light bar. We'll be ready to go. All right. People have asked also, why don't I just do this from the inside of my truck? Here is the little transmitter that transmits a signal, wireless signal, RF signal, to the light bar. In case there's any RF interference, I wanna make sure that my lights are working while it's on the truck I'm towing. And as you can see, it is left turn signal is working. Check the right turn signal. While I'm doing this, I'm also doing a walk around of the truck. Right turn signal is working. Steering wheel secured, hoses and electric cord secured, front axle chained, breakaway chains installed, U-bolts safely in the cups, tie down chains in place. Check the brake lights and we're good to go. I just flipped the winch brake rather than the treadle valve or the trolley valve, some people call it. That applies my truck brakes 
and it should give us Ta da brake lights good to go all right we're ready to roll
place. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Gotcha. So I know pretty much where it's at. Okay. All right, sir. Uh, we'll give you a call uh, whenever we get back into into town. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Rotator Ron's job is never done. So we have another potential job lined up when we get done here. I'm going. You're going? I'm going. Okay. That one could prove more interesting than this for I sure. I want to video it. Gentleman says he has a uh, twelve thousand pound or twelve twelve thousand pound capacity shooting boom forklift uh, shooter booms. Uh, let's see, hard to explain. That for people in the industry that know what they are, they can they have several different ways of steering. Uh, they crab steer, they can circle steer, but uh, anyway, the boom extends out and they have forks on the end. Uh, they're used for unloading trailers, moving, well, a variety of things. Anyway, he's got one apparently pretty stuck. Uh, the counterweight is sunk down past the counterweight and the front end is actually in the air, he said. So... And no good easy access to get to it. Okay, back to the frequently asked questions. Okay, so again, in the words of Whitney Houston, how will I know if it's a good place to work? How will you know if it's a good place to work? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't know. That may take you some trial and error. Uh, a good company to work for, you're going to probably find that they have nice equipment. Uh, Check Midwest truck. They, they have nice equipment. They take care of their people. They're, they wear professional uh, Check uniforms. You know, they, they don't show up in uh, shorts and t-shirts at a, at a job site. You know, uh, you want to look for somebody, a, a true professional uh, company to work for. Not a fly by night. So some company that has been established that has working order equipment that is clean and kept up to date. Professional uniforms, professional language. Uh, and it may take some trial and error. You may find a company that you're not a good fit with. You may think one is nice and then month or two into it, find out other ones. Sometimes it's just trial and error. Okay. Next question. How much does this beauty cost, or how much would it cost to replace as it sits with all of its equipment, the chains, and everything? Uh, prices have skyrocketed the last year after the whole uh, coronavirus materials have become more scarce. Previous years, we would say to completely replace this truck and outfit it the way it is now would be around $750,000. I would guess that with the inflation, that would be closer to probably $850,000. I haven't priced one, but I'm that's taking a, an educated guess. Okay, so what speed is this truck? How oh, you mean gears? gears? Yeah, how many uh, gears? 18, 18 gears. Okay, how much does it weigh? How much does it weigh? Fully equipped the way it sits without towing a truck, it weighs between 72 and 73,000, depending upon how much fuel and equipment. In the winter, we keep a little more equipment more tire chains and stuff on it so it'll weigh a little more in the winter too. Okay. How far? 
I have I have scale tickets to prove it. A lot of people don't believe that this truck weighs that much, but I have scale tickets to prove it. How far if will you go? Pratt wants to oh, dig out, you need to drive with both hands. I know. I said if you want to dig them out. No, I don't even know what they look like. We're okay. Good. Um, how far will you go for a job? as far as someone is willing to pay us to go. Okay. Um, we don't do a lot of long distance towing anymore. We used to do a lot of cross country towing. Been up into Canada, out to California, Florida, Texas. Um, about as far as we go now, we keep around a two to 300 mile radius from the shop. Just get too expensive for the customer to do that? No, it's not really that. It's just that uh, we don't have the staff right now uh, to be able to handle the long distance runs like we used to. Okay. Worker shortage. Okay. So, uh, your favorite job that you did over the last, say, 10 years? Favorite job? One that maybe challenged you the most? Or... I gotta say the... Okay, so I think getting, I know which one getting... that was. The forest recovery? Okay. Still a little raw with um, Dad, but uh, I would suggest that people go back and watch the U-Haul recovery in the forest because that was kind of a redneck nightmare. So to speak. But we got it done. You got it done. Got it done. Uh, let's see what else. And I got to spend time with Dad. What is the craziest, funniest job that you've ever done? I think I know this one. Can I say it? Sure. Okay. So this was probably my favorite. I'm glad I wasn't involved. I'm glad I wasn't there. But where you were called, correct me if I'm wrong, by the local police or If it's county. one I'm thinking of, it was Highway Patrol. Oh, oh. the Highway Patrol, where there Are was... Are you talking about the one that's going down the hill towards Commerce? A, a, a vehicle in the woods, yep. Yep. running from someone, I don't know, they, they, speculate uh, a husband came home too early. The first and... person had to dive out of a window, they believe. <laughs> uh, without a stitch of their clothing. Yes. That would have been a, a, a fun one, I would think. Well, the, it wasn't so much the recovery, it was the... the circumstances. The circumstances, because the, uh, the trooper asked me as soon as I got on scene, he said, Ron, when you go down there, can you please see if you can find this gentleman some shorts or something? Because his bare butt's on my seat. <laughs> and it was not warm out. No, it was cold. It was cold. It was cold. Okay. Uh, that's been several years ago. It was. But that's the one I think that sticks out in my mind. I think that was the funniest. Uh, we have some that are funny, some that are challenging and interesting, some that some that are you really scary. just wish, some that are yeah. scary, some that you wish. Oh my gosh, why didn't we get this call? I really wish somebody else had gotten it. Yeah.
girl's car flipped and like Mom Pratt said, there was uh, uh, the car caught on fire. The mother actually was responding to the crash uh, and caught the car fire on video. Part of that video is on my video. just really emotional charged scene uh, the young lady came out with almost not a scratch you know uh, it's just truly amazing you know in a, the way we believe it was uh, miraculous you know that such an incident you can come out unscathed uh, but yes the uh, the family and I you know all I was doing was doing my job but the, I guess the relationship that we built or the way the way we handled the situation uh, you know the mother and the daughter actually invited me to the daughter's high school graduation which was which was very special uh, the, the situation upset her a lot and she wasn't sure she was going to be able to graduate uh, but she graduated and I was able to attend and that was that was awesome um, there was another one where, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, there might have been a fatality, I don't know, but the one where the SUV caught on fire and the only thing that wasn't burnt um, was the Bible. There's been several so instances with the Bible, but yes, there was... Uh, not on video because as she said there was a fatality uh, there was an older gentleman who unfortunately was going the wrong direction on the interstate and SUV uh, swerved to miss or they hit it I don't remember the exact circumstances but this was just a total freak accident. The way this part happened, the SUV went over the guardrail. Gas tanks are usually very protected. They're not exposed. You can't get to them. But as this SUV went over the guardrail, part of the guardrail sliced the gas tank open, sparked, and ignited the gas in the car, in the SUV. So the SUV is upside down. Uh, the female occupant is thrown from the vehicle. The man, the driver, is trapped inside the vehicle while it's burning. Police were already in route to try to intercept the uh, wrong way driver. So the policeman actually saw it happen, reached into the burning car, dragged the man out. Um, from what I understand, the man and the woman did survive. Uh, had a lot of burns, a lot of recovery time. Um, but by the time they got the fire put out, there's more to the story. They thought there was a young girl. Toddler. Yeah, toddler. Thought there was a, a young girl in the car, and we were searching for the girl or what may have been left of the girl. And quite a ways into this search, we were directly involved in that. Again, it's something you won't see on our channel. But uh, something that most people don't understand is it, it, the towing and recovery people don't just swoop in after the fact, hook up and go. It, it's not as simple as that in some instances because you were involved in trying to recover this supposed toddler who was in this vehicle. Um, and in which, the fatality crashes... Thankfully she was not there. Fatality crashes, the evidence protection uh, is very important because, you know, they reconstruct the scene try to find out exactly 
get this vehicle and we're picking it up, recovering it, everything inside the vehicle is totally burned, almost nothing, nothing left, except we reach in and there's a Bible that is just barely charred around the edges, but is still readable, it's still legible.
large portion of the shop. So he is still with the company in an emergency situation. Uh, Talon is the other person in the in the business who is certified and fully capable and does a great job running the rotator. Yeah, so yeah. that's one of the big questions. Is Ron the only person in the company who can run the rotator? The answer is no. It usually is the only one because Talon is managing other things. Yep. The other guys can, you know, run the service trucks and the rollbacks and the smaller wreckers. And, uh, Talon is fully trained and fully capable of yep. operating this truck. Yep. So. And Mikey is being trained. Yes. So, who's actually the boss of the shop? Uh, I can answer that. Undoubtedly, my mother. Oh, well, I was going to say Wes and the baby. Uh, um, but yes, yes. Yet. Undoubtedly, my mother. She has been the boss since 1985. Uh, she is a lovely, lovely woman who uh, cares a great deal about the people that work for them. Very grateful to still have her with us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, she's a classy lady, folks. If you don't know that, if you've never seen her, she's a beautiful lady with a great smile.
has been there probably the longest, I think, out of anyone except for Ron. Um, so Kenny, Kenny also does a lot of the night calls along with Mike and Ron. Those are, uh, and Tom, those are the primary ones who do that. So, let's see, then there's Dalton. Dalton is one of Ron's apprentices and yes, is Kenny's son. He is learning the ropes, uh, being trained up to be able to drive the equipment. There's Eli, who's I think the newest hire. Eli is also doing an apprenticeship. He is finishing up his um, auto mechanics certification at our local career center during the day and then he comes to work in the afternoons and He's doing a great job, a quick learner. Eli says this is his dream job. And there's Ethan who works when he's here sometimes, not always. Um, he's only usually here on weekends, and so it's kind of tough for him to get involved with some things. But once he finishes his degree at uh, Lincoln Tech, then his plan is, unless somebody else snags him, but his plan uh, has always been to come back to work and fulfill the legacy that Bill and Ron and, and Ethan now would step into working. Now, of course, Ethan will be able to drive the wreckers. Um, he can drive the traffic control truck and things like that, but he cannot drive the larger equipment. So, um, let's see, I think I've gotten them all. So we have Leanne, Linda, Lauren, three L's, Mike and Mike, Dalton, Kenny, Talon, Ron, Eli, Ethan, I know I'm missing somebody, I know I am, anyway, that's about uh, the, the lot, um, people also want to know how many are in the fleet, and I think I can probably answer that, uh, Ron may have to correct this on the video if I'm wrong, but they have the rotator, they have what they refer to as the little Pete, they have a road tractor with a they call it a tandem axle trailer, some people call it a land all. Um, they have two service trucks, they have two rollbacks, and they have the Western Star. They do have a set of airbags, air cushion recovery. They don't use those very often, they really don't have to. Um, the shop was opened in 1985, Bill branched out and had a, had a vision and branched out and then Linda followed and as Ron commented, Bob, the service manager, uh, came shortly thereafter. So it's been in business for a long time. Uh, I am blessed to be a member of the family. Okay, so we are here. Basically reverse the process doesn't typically take as long to drop out as it does to hook up. I get my remote out or did I not? The steering wheel didn't go anywhere. Everything's still in one piece. So all is good. Curious to see 
what this next job is and if the gentleman actually decides to hire us to do the job. Sounds interesting. If we can access it. That seemed to be an issue with him. He was concerned about being able to access the uh, location where it's at. We'll go uh, do a scouting mission in the traffic control truck whenever we get back from this. Normally, waiting on a driver, our driver's waiting on a, this truck, that is. I haven't seen anybody. A lot of people ask what the baking soda is for. Quick and simple. Baking soda neutralizes acids in our industry, primarily battery acid that we see at wreck sites quite frequently. Extend it out enough so that whenever I drop it, I have room to uh, retract the underreach, fold it up without having to move either truck. Now I'm trying to grab, I could always reach in and uh, dump the air ride. I'm trying to grab Oh, these chains here, at least loosen them before the airbags reinflate, leveling themselves out. And other than retrieving our chains off of it, It's ready to roll. Y'all get those chains right now. Mom Pratt's still in there talking. And I wonder what she's saying about me. I may have to do some heavy editing. <laughs> ah, we have a great relationship. Okay. Make sure this thing starts. Ready for its next driver.
these can be a pain. up we're ready to move on to the next job all right the towing portion of this job is done so for all of those who wish to cut out here as always thank you for watching and God bless for anybody who's interested, we will continue our frequently asked question sessions with Mom Pratt on the ride back. Make plans. 
plans? Just when you're sleeping good. Basically, don't make plans. Pretty much the only time that, you know, the phone really doesn't ring is number one. When, on Christmas. When Mikey takes the calls, which yeah. he is he's wonderful about doing. Sometimes we just need to jump on the boat or get away, or sometimes he just needs to sleep for a full evening. The boat or the motorcycle, just some yep. downtime, just to to catch a break. And so a lot of press. a lot of this job is very tense. Um, we've been married almost 33 years, which wow.
road much like this, two lane with no shoulder. This was long before we started videoing or anything like that. Um, it was raining, it was at night, and he had to pull off the edge of the road, and when he did, his truck sank. And I had to jack the front end of the truck up to be able to plug the hole on the bottom of the tank. Uh, and I was finished with the job. I was underneath the truck letting the jack down or getting ready to let the jack down whenever another semi blew past us and was going so fast that it rocked the truck that I was working on. The jack kicked out and hit me square in the mouth. Knocked out all of my front teeth. Two of my front teeth were embedded in the uh, roof of my mouth. That was gross too. The rest of them I picked up off the ground and put in my shirt pocket as she said. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, yeah, we stay home and pray a lot. Lots of other people praying. That's why, you know, even uh, although the videos that you see in the incident may be over for weeks or months or whatever, Ron still asks for prayers and well wishes for all involved because, you know, there's there's a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder stuff from a lot of the incidents that you work. So although they physically may be healed, you know, emotionally it's still a stress. And, there is, and, and this is a job with a lot of stress for the family, for the worker, for everybody involved. A lot of people don't realize it, um, but PTSD is highly prevalent in towing recovery operators, police officers, firefighters, EMS, you know, anybody that works in emergency situations, we see a lot of stuff. Um, and there could be one incident that haunts you. It could creep up on you over time, just the, the number of incidents that you see. There's a lot of stuff that we see that you will never see on our channel, but um, you gotta learn how to deal with it. I mean, you, you, you got to learn how to deal with it, put your feelings aside for a little bit, focus on the task at hand, and then go home and deal with the situation, learn how to deal with it. Well, I mean, like we said, it's more than just hooking and hooking. I mean, yeah. you've got to, there's sometimes when a particularly nasty crash or incident where someone is really severely injured or a, a fatality that a wrong come home and just be kind of quiet. And, you know, he'll just say, I need a minute. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, but it does happen. Increases the, the amount of stress, but you have to learn how to deal with that, as you said. Okay. And some people can't. Some people cannot handle the stress of working this job. Uh, some people will train for it and uh, think they can handle it. They go out on the interstate, they work their first fatality crash, or they have their first close call on the interstate, and they're done. Uh, not saying anything bad about them. Some people just can't handle the stress. It happens. It's, it's an extremely dangerous job. It's not for everybody. You know, not to change the subject, we've talked so much that the windows are all falling. I know, that's why I'm rolling down <laughs> windows as we slow down. That's my body heat that was built up whenever I was working. I know, it's getting foggy over here too. I didn't think it was that hot, and it's getting hot here. Well, I've turned the defrosters on. Turn the defrosters on and uh, turn it on cool. See if that helps. Scott County Courthouse to your left. Big 
perpendicular to the roadway, right about there, if I remember correctly. Or there, yeah, there. The sheriff and one of the deputies came out and blocked off the road while we. Uh, I'm not very smart. I'm not going to imagine this is perpendicular for all of those. Correct. Per per perpendicular is a T. <laughs> Parallel run side to side. Other people may Sorry, know that. I have a strong math background. Other people may know that. That's one thing I didn't remember. Math, geometry, and physics. She was asking earlier about uh, getting into the industry. Math, geometry, and physics. Very, very prevalent in this job. What you thought you didn't need to pay attention to in class, wrong. You need it in this industry.
not me.
after the loss of my dad. It was just overwhelming, and I uh, I want you to know how greatly appreciative I am of that. Uh, every card was read. Every message was read. Uh, all the comments are always read, but I don't have time to respond to all of them. I wish we did. It's just this is a busy life. Like this is a Sunday. We're out working. Yeah. I mean, there were some spectacular uh, things that people have created for you, and, and just, uh, I mean, that, that kind of thing always goes on, which is unbelievable, you know, for a small town guy, um, but that people are so supportive of the channel, of you, of our family, and I guarantee that the reason that twice was for all the prayers. I mean, we have a lot of them going with us all the time. Yeah. Well, the last time, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, no, about a month now, I guess, wasn't it? She and I both had Corona and Influenza A yeah. at the same time. So we go big or go home, basically. We went home for a week. Um, you know, the, the one thing I can say that I wished would have happened was it could have decreased our appetite, but it didn't. You know, we, we didn't want to walk down the stairs, but we ate all the time. But, <laughs> we, we stayed close to the kitchen. <laughs> but, um, you know, people were calling and checking on us and texting and, and dropping off food on our porch. It was just amazing the amount. You know, when you think that, that the world has gone to crap, um, you get on to a channel like this and you read the comments or you know all of the condolences and, and just amazing acts of kindness and it changes your philosophy a lot. It does. And with that, we're almost back to the shop. Move on back to yet. job number two. On to job number two and see what uh, what happens there. Again, thank you to everybody. Uh, We're always, always sending prayers and um, keeping the family and all the workers in your thoughts. Uh, it is a huge blessing to all of us. And we'll say goodbye for now. God bless. As always, thank you for watching, and God bless.